In this lesson, we're going to take the time to review basic unit testing with JUnit. So again, if this is a new topic for you, you could consider this another beyond the basic topic. Otherwise, it's just a quick review of some basic unit testing. Go ahead and get the project Basic Unit Testing with JUnit loaded up into your Eclipse IDE. And before we get started, let's also note that we're using JUnit 4, and that's already added into the build path of this project. If you didn't have that, or if you've never seen that before, to add in unit testing, simply go to the build path. And once again, you could add a library, or you can configure the entire build path. And we'll see that it is a library for JUnit 4. And so if this wasn't showing up, you could easily select Add Library and select JUnit. That will bring in the choice of JUnit 3 or JUnit 4. We'll use the JUnit 4 syntax, which is the latest version of JUnit. Once that's in place, note we have the Swimmer class and a simple Swimmer test, which we'll test our Swimmer with. Again, the Swimmer has a race ID and a name, a default and an explicit constructor, the race ID and name mutators and accessors, a method that performs the sport, and the two-string method. So to show the basic testing, what I'm going to do is just briefly talk about unit testing and show what I wrote for the actual tests to make sure that this code is working as expected. So I've leveraged the fact that we have the before and after, which run a setup and a teardown, before and after every execution of each test. So my swimmer can be created in the before or the setup, leveraged during my test, and then I need to tear it down at the end. Now the reason I need to tear it down each time is because we want to make sure that we follow unit testing strategies and practices, and that is that we don't expect test conditions to cross tests, meaning that I don't want to set up something in a swimmer in test one and rely on that setup having taken place during test two. We don't have a guarantee of the order of testing, but what we do have is that each test will execute, and so we can do this setup and tear down at the start and end of each test. We'll set the name to Jill and the racer ID to 319515. And then we have some statements. In our test constructors here, we'll make sure that our swimmer S was created. And we'll basically say assert not null, which will guarantee that the object is not null. And if it is, we'll give ourselves a message, could not create basic swimmer. Swimmer S2 then will create here in the test constructors with the explicit constructor, passing in that racer ID and name, and that will be Jill and 319515. And so what we can do is make sure that those values are returned. So we'll test that the object is not null, and again tell us that we couldn't create the complex swimmer. And then we'll make sure that as we created that, we have both the name and the race ID equal to our expected values. How we do this is we give ourselves a message that says this is what was happening, then we give the expected value, and then we give the actual value. And if the expected value and the actual value are not the same, we'll get a warning message or the test will fail and we'll get that error message. I'm also then going to test each of the mutators and accessors. And we note all of our tests have at test on top of them. That lets the compiler and the JUnit know that this is a new test to run. And this one will test get and set name by just using that default swimmer. Again, the default swimmer will be reconstructed before each one, so we can't test name in the racer ID portion. That would be a violation of JUnit syntax testing practices. So here we'll just simply keep this confined to the name or the race ID based on the test that we're running. And then finally, we want to test all of our public methods. Now, I don't have a test in place for testing the actual perform sport, so you could practice by writing that yourself. Otherwise, we see here the other public method is the toString, and we're just going to get back the name and the ID that we expect and make sure that they're contained within the output string. So we'll run the output string as the return from the toString value and make sure it contains name and racer ID as a string to make sure that our toString is reporting as expected. And then to run our unit test, we simply click the Run button, and we see here that all of our tests have passed. And then again, just to show something's failing, if we wanted to, we could put in some bogus number there, and we could see that that test now fails, and it tells us here, toString does not contain ID, which is our message that we gave ourselves right here, toString does not contain ID. So that's the basic gist of how unit testing is going to work, and we want to make sure that our tests fail when they should, and pass when they should as well. 